we just pick up. We just pick up here. We just, we just pick up here. Oh, See, what does John 30, 20, 31 teach us? But these things are written that you may know, believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and in His name, and in His name. What that teaches? Read the scripture again and read. Speak John up a bit. twenty thirty one says, "But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and in His name." Teaches. Well, the Son of God teaches. Thirty-one. Yeah, John twenty thirty-one. It means. Even you might have life through His name. Amen. It's saying that, it's saying that these things are written. The things that are written are written for that purpose, so that we can believe. So all the things that we have that are written are the things that we need to be able to believe in His name. We don't. We don't need anything else. I mean, like I said, amen. Because in verse 30 it says, Many other, many other signs yeah. truly did Jesus in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. And I, I tell people that all the time. Like, oh, we talk about that all the time. Like, Jesus lived for 30-something years. It's a, I mean, he did stuff all the time every day. I mean, you couldn't, you, could, you couldn't write books or write every exact thing that he did, like every time. And he picked up his chicken and ate it. You know what I mean? Like you don't need to have. I mean, he ate every day, or at some point. You know what I mean? Like you ain't got to write and he, what he ate, what he ate, like you know who he ate with, every time he ate, all that kind of stuff, or like all the different signs and all the different things he did, because he did stuff all the time. The point is, is that what's written is written so that you can believe. It's sufficient. It's enough. Just like uh, uh, Abraham uh, in Luke 16, uh, when uh, the uh, the rich man was. Uh, in torment and he's looking up he's like you know send Lazarus he could tell, talk to my, my brothers I got five brothers and, and Ab Abraham's response is that you know he has Moses and the prophets you know he has believed on them that's sufficient that's enough for you to believe to avoid this place of torment all you have to do is believe what's already been written yes. you know what I mean and so you don't need anything extra you just have to believe God has already deemed what we have in the word enough to convert the soul of a man. It's just a matter of will you believe that? That's the question. Okay, and another thing is it's like a record because we weren't there. So the all the Christians coming from that time on could know about God, about Jesus, about the sacrifices, and that through our faith and believing in the scriptures what we read, we can have salvation. It's written because, you know, the believing on Jesus' name because everything he did, that's the power right there. There's no other name under heaven whereby man can be saved. So believing on his name, mm -hmm. we can't know. If we don't read it, we don't have a record of it. So that's why these things were written. That's enough. We don't need to know every, like the way say, every single thing he did. Right. Because that would be too much information overload and it gets redundant. And then we'd be like, oh yeah, that's just commonplace. So to make him special, to make it stand out, he gave us just enough that we can believe. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah, and then, and then carrying on too, you know, when we talk about the word believe, you have to continue to believe that what he has written. See, because you can become a Christian and get baptized, and at that time, you can obey the gospel and believe that he is the Son of God. But as time goes on, you could change your mind. But the steadfastness is for the Christian who continues in believing that Jesus Christ is, you know, the Son of God. And then also in... um. We would read, uh, Dwayne was saying, you know, everything, is, it wasn't written, you know, we don't have to say he ate this meal and give all the details. John 21 and 25, it tells us, it says, now there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written? I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. So, again, going back to, he has given us everything we need in this book that we have right now. He doesn't need to give us anything more. Mm -hmm. Amen. We do good just reading, reading the Bible. <laughs> yeah, just like Sister Jeff said, be so much. It would be so much information. 
Many do good just to do deal with the information we have in our Bibles now. So like to say, to learn and live our lives by what He has revealed to us through His Word. The need to know. God did not use His Word for us to put in a pretty cupboard to look good on a shelf or a table, bookshelf. He gave us His Word for us to what? Why did God give us His Word? Study it. <coughs> and to learn and live our lives by what He has revealed to us through His Word. Let us look at some scriptures here that go along with the topic and discuss them. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker, who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of the truth. Brothers and sisters, too many people, too many brothers, don't divide the word at all. The word of truth. <laughs> it says, yeah, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. At this congregation, do we rightly divide the word of God? You sure? How do you know? Because it's what? Huh? The evidence is in the scriptures. Because it's written. Amen. If you believe in the Bible, it's written that we. That's right. That's what it's written for, for us to know. 1 Peter 2 1 and 2 says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Now, I know when we heard the God, I heard, we, me and my wife heard the God, man, we went home and looked at the scriptures and everything, seeing Brother Paul was correct. And it was on point. He was on point. Yeah, because I was a Catholic and my wife Baptist. And I went through the whole nine yards being a Catholic. The whole nine yards. I was an altar boy. Mm-hmm. I get, I, when I got to Catholic school, I got out early. When they have funerals and stuff. Mm-hmm. I like that. Get out. <laughs> But so you have, uh, anybody ever been to Catholic school? Yeah. No. And then the teachers. The sisters didn't play. When when you if you was hard headed, they'll hit you. And then they will hit you and tell you. Them tie tie them legs up. And and, the, and, and <laughs> Sister Carr, you have some? You brought back memories when you uh, were uh, sharing that with us, and I've shared it with you all too, that uh, when Anthony and I came into the truth, I think about how uh, he was brought up. He was brought up in he was brought up in the church, but he never obeyed because he was being all that he shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> But what happened was, and we married and uh, had children, and I'll never forget, I, uh, I, I was, uh, was off, I was Baptist, and I was off into my religion, you know, and I would take the, the, the children to uh, Baptist organization, because we know the truth. I would take them to the Baptist organization. When I would come home, my husband had been from work, and he'd come home, he'd be there playing albums. 
But it was when I came home one Sunday and told him the boys had been baptized. Mm. That's when he knew. Because, see, he had been brought up in truth. Yeah. He knew truth even though he wasn't obeying truth. Mm. But that's when he took and it changed and it changed. And I remember he would begin to question me because he knew that he was, he knew the truth. He just hadn't obeyed it. And I told him, I said, when you become a preacher, what pastor are you? And you know, often we'll answer that I'll reflect back on those things and we'll laugh about it because we are so thankful to God that we did come to know the truth and obeyed it. And we've been on the bandwagon, been on it ever since. I tell you, it's no better life than to live the life of a Christian. Mm -hmm. home, me and my wife discussed this. Said, Man, nah, that can't be right. And, you know, I've been in a Catholic church, but it was something missing. Yeah. It was something missing while I was in there. It was something missing. That was, that was the truth was missing. Truth. Yeah, the truth was missing. And you can explain you can tell when the truth is not told. Yes. You know, about something. Because I, I read the Bible, the whole Bible, three times from the cover, from Genesis to Revelation. I didn't get nothing out of it. The second time, the second time I read it, I got some things out of it. The third time I read it, yeah. I didn't really understand what it was saying, brother Henson. Yeah, um, um, I, I think that I think that words um, words are important, and they're so important. Uh, they're so important that that you know there are a lot of things that are unseen, a lot of misdirection that's going on in life, mm -hmm. because words are words are important, Amen. and so. Uh, if you think about our, our public school system, our young people, that's where education starts. And it's, you know, it's a big fight with these school districts on curriculum, what, what, what they teach. Because there's some that know that, you know, you teach them young and they start to learn, they're going to find out what we know. Right. And so that's why they want to change the history of books. <laughs> and so people, people often want to know where they come from because they don't get it in school. When they get out of school and they get old, they start trying to see, well, who are my parents, where I came from? You know, things of this nature because because the books are so thrown off so it's important that it's important about what what words we understand so when we a lot of times that's why we got to find christ after we get we've been baptist for many years we've been catholic for many years yes. and then the word of the word of the lord comes along we're like how did i not notice all right. this time right you know what i'm saying yes. so so and you're an upstanding person you got a good job you probably got a fortune 500 company but you, you can figure out everything in the world, but you can't figure out that one thing. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the gospel is here, it is here for those that are lost. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I'm saying is that, <clears throat> you know, words are important. Just talking to Brother Ozan outside just a minute ago. Uh, Matthew 12 and 37, you know, found the scripture. I just want to read the scripture right quick because you got to be careful what you say and what you do. Because when you say it, God automatically records it. Amen. We don't worry about what nobody else says. God, God records it. I wrote the scripture down right here. Let me make sure. 1237. 1237. Let me get it right quick. I want to read it. I got it right here. The Bible says, um, For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So, so I mean, you know, you, you got, we got to be careful, you know, lying telling people that this is something that, that God said or God said this God said that we don't know if we can't find it in the word of God and it makes sense if we can't find at least two places there's a male that, that there's a male and a female in there that, that work together in the Bible so the words got to match and so people are always throwing stuff around that don't have any information you go to a friend and people always say oh man they was they they gonna be in heaven with the Lord Baking cakes and stuff like that. That's in, your words are being recorded. Yes. Yeah. You done made a contract. So you, so you just better be careful what you say about yes. the Lord. You know, and be slow to anger. Don't go off on nobody, you know, because right. you're going you're gonna to cause somebody somebody danger and harm that you talk about. And you better go fix it. You better go fix it.
So I, I just wanted to say that, bro. Brother Henson, read, read verse 36 to go with 37. Kind of but, I say, but I say unto you that every idle word that man shall speak, mm -hmm. they shall give an account. Account thereof in the day of judgment. That's it. So they both they go together. Thank you, sister. You, 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 you topped it off right there. Yeah. You're going to you give an account. They do not. Amen. What is an idle word? Hmm. When you say when you just, just say anything, you just say anything. Hmm? Say anything. Hmm. No validity. It's a careless word. No thought. Has no weight. Useless. It has no weight. Indeed. No Indeed. I was, uh, I was looking at John, John chapter 10 and uh, verse 25 and following. Uh, yeah, I want to start at 25 just to kind of get, I'm reading down to uh, 36, but I just wanted to get, you know, context. It says, John 10 and 25, Jesus answered them, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. 31. <coughs> then the Jews took stones again and stoned him. <laughs> it's crazy. Je yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? Uh, the Jews answered him, saying, "For a good work we stone you not, but for blasphemy, because thou, because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God." Jesus answered them, and here's this, this is what I want to get to. Jesus answered them, "Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. <coughs> if if ye be if he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken." Say ye, say ye of him whom the Father had sanctified and sent to the world, thou blasphemy, because I said I am the Son of God. And so, and we just talking about we talking about the word, you know. And when you know when we we talking about the word and its validity, you asked a question earlier. You were saying, how do you know that we rightly divide the word? Because that's that's always a point of contention. Uh, I was having a conversation with a guy like last week about something similar as far as like. Uh, man, like he was saying, the, the, the Bible is written by man, you know, and everybody, all men have their interpretations of what the Bible says, mm -hmm. you know, and so you may, one person may look at it this way, another person may look at it that way, you know, and all these, and you can see the points that they're making as far as he mm -hmm. making that point, and you can see how he come to that conclusion, and that person saying this, you kind of see what they're saying, you know, so it's just like, so then basically, he was just saying, you just do have a good heart to our God, do the best you can type. That was basically his thought process. But I was like, when you look at the scriptures, if you read the scriptures, the scriptures say one thing. They don't say two or three things. You know, and, he, and the, the key to understanding if, if what you're saying is right is if there are any contradictions. Mm -hmm. If you read the scriptures and the scriptures flow with heart, they're, they're in harmony, then what you're saying is rightly divided. It's right. If you see, if you if you're saying something or you reading something, and you have to twist it, or you read another scripture that contradicts what you're saying, then you're wrong, or something about what you're saying is wrong, or your understanding of something is wrong, because the Bible, as, as as Jesus said, the scriptures can't be broken. You know what I mean? And so when you when you when so like I said, because that's that's a that's a really uh, important part of Christianity is making sure that what you're saying is right. Making okay. sure, because we talk about God has given us all things, mm -hmm. but you have to make sure that the portion that you got is from God and not from your imagination. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you could think that it comes from the Bible, <laughs> but I mean, me and Brother Ozan riding years ago, we talked about, you know, the scriptures, you can twist the scriptures and say whatever you want. Yeah, sure. There's something in the Bible, it don't matter, whatever you can imagine in your head, you can come up with something in the Bible, you can kind of tweak it a little bit and make it kind of halfway say what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So, but but the, but the, but the issue is going to be that it's going to contradict something else. You're going to run into a snag, and if you're honest and you're sincere, you when you either either a when you read it yourself or b when somebody else bring it to you and be like, hey, now nah, I'm not sure about that because that would contradict this. You have to be sincere enough to say, yeah, you're right. That that does that is kind of off. Let me go back and look at that again, or whatever. 
that's the only way. That's the only way. But when you go into the scripture and it's clear, and it, all you have to do is just say what it says. If you just say what the Bible says, the intent of the scripture or what it's saying, then it, it is what it is. Like you can't you can't misinterpret that. You can't that's right. you can't misinterpret what the Bible says. It's just it is making sure that what the Bible says in this area matches what the Bible says in that area and there's harmony, then that's what God's intent is as far as what He wants you to know. You know what I mean? But you, like I said, you have to be sincere in yourself when you're reading, number one, when you're studying yourself, and two, when you're having a conversation with other people, you have to be sincere and say, I just want to know truth. Instead of trying to be like, because as the Bible says, knowledge puffs up. So if you start getting to the point where it's like, I know the Bible, mm -hmm. and you, you start getting to the point where like, you take pride in the fact that I know the scriptures, then it's real hard for you when you find that you're wrong mm -hmm. to admit that you're wrong, and that's when you fail. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Okay, I just wanted to read that scripture. Uh, Dwayne alluded to it in uh, the scriptures not being broken, and it's found in John 10.35. And he said, if he call them gods unto whom the word, word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. And I was also thinking while he was talking, you know, we, in the church, if we don't even talk about the world, just in the church now, so many are being fooled. So many saints are being duped. They're leaving the, leaving the church in record numbers. They no longer want to hear what's, what's being said. And we've gotten to the point where that scripture that says that even God's very elect, People are going to fool us. So we have to be on our guard. And we have to stay ready and be ready. That's why we do have to know the scriptures. And they can't be broken. Because one will link you to something else. That will link you to something else. And they all tie in and go in together. So don't be fooled when somebody comes to you. And tries to throw you off. Nelsie and I had a conversation just a little bit ago. You know the world. They want to try and trick you. And you can't, you got to always have your guard up when you're dealing with the world because they will try to tell you something to make you go, hmm, hadn't thought about it like that. And then before you know it, you may not even be on the right track anymore because you've let them throw you off. So we have to stand firm in our belief and our conviction in what God has written and said from the scriptures. And as Christians, as God. Uh, students of God's word uh, we've got to understand who is the father of the world mm -hmm. and that is Satan yes. he rules yes. down here Amen. so when we understand that actually things that we hear from the world we should automatically be on guard and know that that is incorrect yes. but when it comes it invades into the body you know I, I think I want to bring this out when we look at uh, John 10 looking at John 10 and this is a scripture that the world takes out of context because they'll give you scripture but you have really got to read that scripture and understand it because they will take it out of context as well as brethren will take scripture out of context but when you look at John 10 and 14, and we're all familiar with this, it says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and have known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep, and they take this out of context, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd now see they they look at this part other sheep that are not of a, a, another sheet I have which are not of this fold yeah. this is to validate the different denominations yeah. but look yeah. but, but look what they miss at the very end of the sentence it says and there shall be one fold and one shepherd yeah. well if it's one fold and one shepherd how is it you can be added to the church by just laying your hand on the rest uh -huh. how is it that yeah. you can take and just uh, say uh, uh, the father's prayer and just be automatically accepted the scriptures tell us baptism how that we are to be baptized to be added into the body. How are we to pick and choose if if the scripture says, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd, that means we all should be saying and doing the same thing. Uh, I have something I, I, I want to mention. Uh, 
the Bible study is an intense study all by itself. But when you got different religions that are putting out different Bibles, mm -hmm. adding words, yes. taking words out, changing complete verses, mm -hmm. you're going to have a problem. Mm -hmm. It is not so much that man can't understand the oneness of the church, but if you're reading from a wrong Bible, yes. you're going to get that way. Yes. If you, you, the King James, the American Standard, I mean, these are Bibles that have been tried for years and years. But the NIV, the Good News Bible, they are some of your worst. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, I mean to tell you, because if you can get something out of an NIV, you'll get to, and will send you someplace you don't want to go. Yeah, I, I, that's all I want to say. Yeah. Is true? And, and even another example as I think about it, I think it's in Matthew where they use the word Easter. Well, okay. that was a that was for Passover, but they literally say it to mean Easter, Easter, like the way the world celebrates Easter yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. they won't look up words. That's like you right. said, words brother mean Hinson something, said. just as Brother Henson said. Exactly. But man won't look up words. Right. They'll just rather have somebody speak something to them and then just take it and run with it. Okay. Can I just yeah. add something on that? You know, when you, when. I've heard this multiple times as far as what Brother Carl just said about the translations and people look at that and they and they feel like despair like hmm. well then how can you know the truth if it's so much mis misinformation out there if it's so many you know, how can God like how can like God basically in essence how can God hold us accountable if you have all the different translations and all the different interpretations and so much confusion as far as God is concerned like how can we know like how, how could somebody know the truth you got the living new living word and this translation mm -hmm. that translation it's like how do we post how are we supposed to learn the truth you know but it's like and like the, but the but the brother just just said like and I was just thinking like the the other translation is still around. Yeah. It's not like you can go to any store and get a King James <laughs> Bible. And you can get like simple, yeah, simple yeah. tools to like look and see like what words mean. Just get a dictionary and look up these words. But people are lazy. Yes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they, that's just an excuse. If you're told that, hey man, the New Living Word translation is shot. It's just a commentary, but it's like a person's interpretation of what the scriptures say. You don't, you shouldn't use that. They, they don't, they, they rather just pout. Yep. And be like, well, then there is no hope. And they just like fall down on the ground. I got you. And they fall down on the ground. You know what I mean? Because, because, but it's but it's the reason why they make those translations in the first place is because people are lazy. I mean, and, and being as sensitive as I can, like people are lazy. They're slothful. They want to be able to just read it. They want to be able to read it easy and just be like, Ooh, just run through it. You know what I mean? And like, they don't want to have to like think or like study. You know what I mean? Or like look into or like actually think. It's just you just I just want to be just run through it. You know what I mean? But it like but the scriptures are clear give us plenty of examples of people that were diligent about their soul. Yes. You know what I mean? Like and the Bereans. Amen. Exactly. A, the, Bereans. Amen. That's the point. Amen. That's the point that I made. You have to you have to put in some work like out like I, I I was saying the other day, like it, you know, we, we talk about I, I was filming something the other day and I was just talking about um, like anything that we in our family, our, the clan, we talk about, you know, our family like saying or mantra or whatever. It's anything worth anything takes hard work. You know, we talk about that all the time. Anything that you want in life, anything that has any kind of value in life, you got to work for it. That's right. You know, stuff that's, that's right. stuff that's worthless, you, you get that done. Like it's you can pick that off the ground. It don't. That's easy. But something that's really that you got that you that has any true value. You have to put in some work for it. Amen. You know what I mean? It's true. And so, and I'm saying heaven is no different. Like, if you want to go to heaven, Amen. which is the most valuable thing of all, mm -hmm. like, you're going to have to put in some work. But people think that, like, you just, like, stumble into heaven. Like, what? As wow. soon as you're born, like, I'm in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just, just do any kind of mm -hmm. way, walk any way you want, wow. and, like, just go straight up and straight up into heaven. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let people tell that the only cats in the hills, like, the devil and his angels, like, it's, it's echoes down there. Ain't nobody down there, man. <laughs> let people tell it. But, 
you have to like you have to take your soul seriously. Yes. Like, yes. Uh, more importantly, you have to take God seriously. Yes. Like, yes. It, like you have to put in some work if you want to learn who God is. You can't like all the information is here. It's just, do, he said. He said. Like, and I, I'll leave with this. God says he's rewarded and they diligently seek him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? It. Like, you have to you have to go get it. You can't just expect this greatest gift of all just be thrown in your lap like and you just kind of say, oh what's this <laughs> okay I guess I'll go to heaven then like <laughs> you gonna have to like really you have to Jesus, the, the cost that was paid is God's only begotten Amen. Jesus had to be murdered allow himself to be murdered in order for people to get a chance at going to heaven you know what I mean so you think you don't just just it's gonna just be thrown in your lap here take this like no, nah, man, the value of this is too great. You have to give up your life. That's what he says. You have to give up your life yes. in order to go to heaven. You got to give up all your desire, all your hopes, all your whatever you lay on the line. You got to lay everything on the line. You got to be able to lay down your life like Jesus laid down his. Amen. Ain't no, and there's no compromise in that. So what makes you think that you ain't gonna be? You're gonna have to do a little bit of work in order to know who God is. You're gonna have to put in some labor, and you know to understand what you need to know. This thing, like this, it, it's too valuable just to think you're gonna just. Just stumble into heaven. Like, no, it just it don't work that way. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters. Yes, I wanted to go to that what John ten sixteen mm-hmm. was sister brought up about that other fold. How some of them they do take that to be the other church. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask y'all my thinking, you know, by studying and what y'all saying I learned. That other fold they take it to be other churches. <coughs> but tell me if I'm off on my thinking that other fold he said you know when he said and other sheep I have which are not of this fold he was talking to the chosen people at that time and them that I also must bring is us the other fold is us Gentiles we were not of that fold the chosen people but we were the Gentiles that revealed by John the mystery we are that other fold not the fold of different churches and this and that. So the Gentiles are all other people, but not the certain churches. We are the Gentiles to be brought in and to the marriage. You know, Amen. that's where I, my thinking was. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let me, let me say something. Oh, no. Oh. Um, <laughs> let me let me ask the question. How many of us know what baptize means? What is it? No, just anybody. Definition. Mm-hmm. Oh, definition. Submerge. 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 To go yeah. under. Mm-hmm. Yep. Go Dip. Under. Mm-hmm. How can that be sprinkled? <laughs> How can that be poured? How can it be sprinkled? How can that, you know, it can't be if baptizo was a a poet and the Holy Spirit knew what he was doing. Yes. He yes. knew men were gonna come and change the word batizo. Yes. To make it fit his doctrine. Mm-hmm. And it working. And it worked. It's, it, it's, I mean people, millions and millions of people have been sprinkled or uh-huh. poured upon. Yes. But as far as the dipping they don't understand that. Right. All you got to do is get a Bible dictionary. Mm-hmm. Just get a Bible dictionary. And it will tell you exactly what batizo means. Mm-hmm. How do you know? I just, mm-hmm. I'm just. I'm going to make this real quick. <laughs> because, you know, Brother Henson taught a class one time, a long time ago. And, uh, you know, he, re- he found an Old Testament scripture that had the word poor and sprinkle in it in the same in the same verse yeah. so you know they can't be used like that because they're not yeah they're not interchangeable but also too in Matthew 11 and 29 we talking about learning of God Matthew 11 29 says take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am gentle and it goes on but the thing is Take your yoke. We gotta, we gotta spend some time studying the book, the word. We can't just stand up and let everybody tell us everything that's on their mind. We gotta use the own, our own mind, the one God has given us, to learn of God and to know what He would have us to do. Let me say this. I'm gonna say this, and, I, and I'm gonna be through. 
Do you all know that the King James Version of the Bible is to be understood by a fifth grader? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've heard too many scholars say third to the sixth to the seventh, eighth can read the Bible. Now, he probably have to read it two or three times, mm -hmm. but he ain't got to read the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. Just, just read the New Testament. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Good class. Good class. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. Good, class. good class. Once you get hijacked by the Bible. You see. <laughs> 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 Last scripture says, First Peter three fifteen says, Be sanctified. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Some of our brothers in our brotherhood doesn't, don't, doesn't, doesn't fear God. Doesn't fear God but the people. But they fear the people. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. He didn't want to stop that see it. Exactly. When you go to funerals, people. It used to be a time when uh, death was. It's no. Uh, it's 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 really no authenticity. I, I, it's another word I want to use. They're not uh, really taking in. Do you understand? This is the life that is exited this right. life. Right. Now you still living. You got a choice to make. Yes. You know they don't. They it's don't just that. you come mm -hmm. in together. Putting the person away, eat the wall. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I can't speak for all, but I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. You're saying that in a lot of places. People, people don't, don't, don't take it serious. That's it. They don't. They don't take it so seriously. You know, that was one of the things that appealed so to me when I came to this congregation. Uh, and the preacher was that uh, the congregations that I visited and been at I always heard a lot of sermons on God is love mm -hmm. but when I came here it was like it, life is about balance I got more of God is wrath mm -hmm. to understand that God is love mm -hmm. when you do what he has commanded you to do mm -hmm. but when you do disobey his commandments mm -hmm. there will be a wrath yes. and that's love too yes. 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 Yes, it is. Amen. 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 They don't want to hear it. They might want to fight. But be ready. Be ready. God's on your side. He'll heal the wounds. The thing, think about it. You know, you're right. And God, and as long as you keep that, keep fearing God, the wrath, you know, hell is not, not pretty. And just think. And burning, I mean, a spiritual body burning. There's, I mean, forever pain. That's just like walking around with a broken arm all the time. <laughs> mm. Well, that's my lesson, brother. Y'all have a y'all have a good evening.